Hello and welcome to this tutorial on random numbers and how we can use them for animations. My name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlendedDiplom.com and let's have a closer look on random numbers and their nature. As you can actually tell from the name, computers do nothing but math. Everything that happens inside a computer is a combination of zeros and ones and by extension math with uh, decimal numbers. So in a computer, A times B always equals C, as it is in the real world. If you replace A by any number, then C will differ, but as long as A and B are the same, C will also be the same. So how do we get a random number from a mathematical operation? Let's call it random. So if we combine A and B by any random function, it should be an unpredictable number. The result should not be the same if we do this over and over. That is of course impossible. Any mathematical fo formula, algorithm whatsoever, if you feed it the same numbers, you will always get the same results. And this is why in computer science, random numbers are called pseudo-random numbers, because if you can predict something, then it is not random. And of course, with a mathematical formula, you can predict the result. So what's actually a true random number. For example, on random.org you can download or generate true random numbers and they're based on the atmospheric noise. Since there is no method to predict that noise yet, they can be considered true random numbers. You can also use radioactive decay and, for example, cosmic background radiation. Let's have a look at one of the most simple pseudo-random number generator. This was actually invented in 1240. So about 800 years ago, but it didn't really get any practical use until 1948. I'm guessing this is because without my trusty calculator swatch, it's going to be kind of hard to square four or more digit numbers. So let's see how it works. First of all, we need a seed. Of course, we, we can't just start out of nowhere. So I took the seed 4321. Doesn't seem very random, but the idea is to take any number and generate a random number from it. So if we square the 4, 3, 2, 1, we'll get this result. What the middle square generator then does is it will take only the middle digits, which is 6710, 6710, by cropping the first two and last two. Now we have a new seed and we will put that inside our formula and then it will result in 45 million something and we can do the thing again. We crop it and we get the next random number. But here we see the first problem already. There's a zero. Of course, the more lead zeros we get, the smaller this number will be. And once this is, let's say, 20, our squared number will only have three digits and there's no way we can ever get out of that loop. So this is called a loop. For example, if we use a seed 2500 or if we ever encounter the number 2500, the square is this number and if we crop that, we're back at 2500, which means we get a loop. So at this point we could just say, okay, if, if we ever encounter a zero, then we replace that zero with a different random number generated, maybe even with a different random number generator. That should extend our loop, but for some reason this wasn't the case. Mathematicians tried that, but a combination of pseudorandom number generators was actually less efficient and resulted in a loop much earlier than the more complicated random number generators we're using today. So searching for zeros is not the best method, especially if you have a look at this one, if you encounter 37 3,792, square that, crop it, you're back at 3,792. So we can't really create any number of if statements to catch all those loops, that would be ridiculous. So Python, Blender, Cycles, and so on, uses different random number generator than the middle square, of course. But for all of them, of course, it is true, A times B equals C, which means if you take the same seed, same number to start with, you will always end up at the same number as you did before. Same seed means same result. But for animators like us, this is actually a good thing. 
and let's head over to Blender and find out why. Now I'm getting a tiny bit ahead of myself, but I think it's important to show you what I mean first and then go ahead to the actual tutorial, which is going to be very short anyways. So I have two random number generator nodes and they are being fed to a text object to display that value in the 3D viewport. And even though it's called random, we get the same result both times. And that is because the node seed as well as the seed are identical. If I change any of the two, you can see the result differs. But if we use the same input for the seed, we actually get the same number, which is great because we can actually replicate the results and we can also sort of coordinate two different cases where random numbers are the case. For example, you can make two particle system act exactly the same by using the same seed. But that's just on a side note. So let's have a look on how to set up a text with a lot of random numbers. I'm going to delete this one and I'm also going to delete all the nodes so we can start fresh. If I press Shift A, you can see the huge menu that now has icons, which is awesome. And we can use a text object output. If we then select the text here and use the little eyedropper to catch it or to fetch it, we can now do things with the text. For example, I could use a number random called randomize actually and connect it to the text then um, the then the animation nodes will already create a converter for us that means it takes any data and converts it to a string in our case the data is a float so the text of course can't read floats because it can't do math it can just read letters so the float gets converted automatically into a string which is a text but nothing changed and that is because the new text output object needs to be activated if we want to influence any of the options here with the animation nodes we need to enable it and now you can see the number changed and if I change the seed the number changes as well obviously so let's animate that we can use a animation time info node and then use the frame as the seed. The seed is an integer so again there's a conversion don't worry about those conversions just if you have three conversions in a row which can happen if you drag stuff in between all the time then it's a good idea to delete them all and just redo the connection. Okay so if I now scrub through the timeline you can see at each frame a new number gets generated which is actually what I wanted. But what I don't like is the zero point in front of it. So let's just replace that. It's actually pretty simple. Again, under the text nodes, of course, we can just say replace. So let's drag that in between. Nothing happens because right now we're replacing empty by empty. But if I type in zero point, then you can see it replaces all the zero points. If I leave out the point, it will replace all the zeros. So if you don't like any of the numbers, like you have a fear of the number three or something, just type in three and leave the lower line blank. And then you can use this node to chop out all the threes. But let's leave it at that. If we now scrub through the timeline, we get nice random numbers without, without the zero point in front of it. And as a final exercise, let's see what happens if we want the numbers only to alter every 10th frame or something. I'll just create a number math node, drop it in here and divide it by 10. And if we zoom in here a little, we can see like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because the converting float to integer, float meaning a decimal number, will ignore everything behind the decimal. It will not do any rounding, it will just strip everything behind the comma. 
So 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1, which is 0. 2 divided by 10 is 0 0.2, which again is 0. So only if we reach the 10th frame, this will actually increase by 1. So 0 0.9 again is 0, but 10 divided by 10, that's 1. And 11 divided by 10, that's 1 again. 1.1 gets cropped to 1. So if we use a divide node, we can see that only every 10th frame or every nth frame, whatever number we put in here, the random number generator will be, let's call it triggered or altered. So that's it about random numbers. In the following animation node tutorials, we'll be using them a lot because for some reason, basically every time I try to keyframe something to look random, it looks better if I actually use random numbers. So thank you for watching and as always, please do try this at home.